All right, this is going to be a very, very different thing. So I am shooting some back place and HDRIs here in this like snowy environment. And I figured I'd record the process. So here I got my Fuji GFX 100S, I believe. And uh, I got the lens cap on or the sunscreen, whatever you want to call it. So that way the snow, because it's kind of sprinkling a little bit, doesn't get on the lens. And so all I'm doing is just sh taking shots. What I do want to do is set my ISO as low as it'll go. So 100, simply because it's pretty bright outside so I could get away with less, less of an ISO. And now the way this camera works is uh, it does very good with brightening up shadows. So I'm gonna shoot a little darker than normal and see how this looks. So all I'm doing is just going in and shooting different angles. And then there's like a little slow snow bank here I'm going to use as a framing thing. just to make the shots a little bit more interesting. And I'll probably capture some shots of uh, the road area to kind of do like motion blur running footage or running shots, stills of course, but And I hate this stupid sign that they have in the way, but... It's a pretty cool looking location. I actually shot this spot in the summertime for a end frame project for GMC because it looks really cool with all the mountains and trees, especially when there's a, a sun in the shot. So I shot it during sunset and it was really beautiful. As you can see, it's really nasty out here, but let's get some shots over here. That's all I'm doing is just going in and just taking different zooms, different heights. And then we'll see how it comes out when we edit these shots. And then some could be cool, like really low to get that nasty snow on the ground. Not the most flattering views on the car, but That's what I try to do is just capture as much random stuff as possible and then figure out whether I like it or not later.
So I'll make some cool stuff. And I typically like to focus where I would assume I would put a car if I was taking a photo of a car. So that way that area is kind of sharp when it comes to the back plate. So let's see. I got like 30, 35 plates here. <coughs> I'll shoot a couple more, but <coughs> it eventually gets repetitive. So I'll just shoot some of the, the road over here. from a distance. All right. So there we go. That is me just kind of shooting the back plates. And now I'll do the HDRI next. Alright, so it is sprinkling a little bit, so I'm going to try to only open the lens cap when I'm ready to uh, capture the HDRI. Less chance of uh, moisture on the cap. So I'm going to put the camera right around here, just out in the open, further away from miscellaneous reflections, if you will. And, of course, go in and level it. So. There we go, something like that. Now what I'll do is make sure to format the card so I don't have miscellaneous HDRIs on here. It's just easier to uh, to clean it up and copy the content. All right, ISO 64, F11, F, or one eight thousandth of a second. So I'm gonna aim it down and just capture a test shot. And the reason for that is I don't want uh, the moisture to get on the lens and I wanna see what this exposure is gonna look like. All right, that looks great to me. So now, whoops, I'm gonna go in, format the card again. Setting it to autofocus. Focusing kinda on the foreground snow bank right there. And now make sure this is on zero and firing off. All right, that's one. Rotate it, shoot. Now when I shoot locations like this, I wait for an opening to eliminate ghosting. So there's this truck driving by, and then it looks like I'll have a nice pocket of uh, no, no moving vehicles. So there we go, I'm going for it. All right, quickly another one. No one's in the way. I might even get one more before that truck comes in the picture. All right, I got it, perfect. And then after he passes, I'll put the camera in that direction and shoot that. Fantastic, so now I'll be able to capture this without any vehicles. Nice clean plate. There we go. No one's coming from that direction, fantastic. All right, and then last one is looking up. Well, almost last one. As you can see, I'm getting residue on the cap or on the lens. 
And at this point, I don't want any swirl marks, so I'm just gonna leave it as is and shoot the bottom. And I try to walk away behind the tripod mount, and then I'm not in the picture. There we go. Done. And that's how quick it is to capture an HDRI. So I'm good with this location. I got my back plates, I got my HDRI. I'm good to go. So next step is the processing and I'll record that at home on the computer. So that's, that's the easy step. This is the more time consuming step. All right, so now that I'm on the computer, I'm going to open up the back plates first and kind of color correct, white balance, adjust one. Well, all of them, but they all use the same recipe because I use the same exposure throughout the whole <clears throat> the whole session. So select them all, bump up the exposure, turn down the highlights a little bit. And this is just my own personal uh, setup. Bump up the saturation a little bit. Um, I try not to do too much on this end, so that way my HDRI and back plates match. So let me get the white balance off of my van. That's a little too warm. I'm gonna just do the tarmac. There we go. So raw. Edited. All right. Now I'm gonna click done. Now I'm gonna load the uh, HDRI assets. Same thing. All right. And <clears throat> let's see here. This is kind of my medium. What I do want to do is, and this is again, personal preference. I'm doing chromatic aberration and use profile correction. Oh, let me slide it over. There we go. And then what I do is distortion. I weave the distortion in, but I don't want the vignetting on the on the corners or try to remove as much as possible. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Use the ground as my uh, white balance selection. Because this is an HDRI, I kind of try to leave uh, dehaze and clarity off. Otherwise, you, I, I've noticed some weird things start happening in the skies. And I'm gonna bump up the saturation and vibrance. So there we go. Now with the uh, the HDRIs, what I end up doing is instead of just converting your batch processing, I right click save images, and then pick obviously the output directory, but I make sure it's um, TIFF and it's 16 bit. That's the trick for me is to preserve that 16 bit um, dynamic range, if you will. So I'm going to click done, let these slowly start processing. Uh, while they do that, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the recording until it's done. All right, so that's complete. That's good to go. For back plates, typically what I'll do is select the folder, then go to file, scripts, image processing, and select the directory. Now, for the first batch, I leave it as is, but I do change my output quality to eight, just so smaller file size. But because I mentioned this is a medium format camera, the uh, the resolution of these images is really high. So it's 11,648 pixels. So it's really big. Um, and typically what I'll do is I'll kind of batch several of these. Then I'll transfer these into like 3K and then like 800 pixels. So that way I have various uh, resolution outputs for working because just doing samples off of 11,000 pixel back plates, a little overkill. And then of course for CGI plates, I upload the 3K JPEGs as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it while this happens. And then the last but not least is to create the HDRI and um, process that. All right, so now that that's complete, it's time to do the, uh, the HDRI. So I'm using uh, PT GUI, if I can find it. Here it is. Um, this stuff's pretty straightforward. Load your images. So for me, it's the TIFFs. I rotate them 90 degrees because that's what I have to do with how mine are shot. I click a line. Now, I'll, because it was overcast, 
I might get an error with alignment. We'll see. Surprisingly, somehow it aligned. But regardless, I'm going to apply my uh, template that gets rid of my tripod and also <clears throat> make sure everything's aligned properly. There we go. Now all I got to do is go to create and export the HDRI. Click create panorama and that's it. That's as simple as a PT GUI stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it while that processes. All right, there we go. That's done. We'll go ahead and close that out. Don't need that. Open up the HDRI inside of Photoshop. And typically they come in quite underexposed and there's no secret recipe to the exposure. I just kind of eyeball it. So there we go, no big deal. Throw an exposure modifier, move it up like that. There we go, collapse that or merge it down. Now I have actions already set up, but I use this uh, flaming pair flexify too, but mine are all set up with actions now. So I click turn on and then if you go to flaming pair, you set up the uh, the preferences. So it does spit out the top and bottom views of your HDRI. So here for me, <clears throat> once I click on, it's going to automatically go through the steps and make a file ready for uh, clean plating. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tripod just using a nice little quick clone stamp thing. There we go. Like so. What I'll do is throw an exposure modifier and see if... So see, these were the little uh, wet spots while I was shooting. Let me see if uh, it'll be easy to just take them out. Since it was overcast, there's not a lot of like different tone. So there we go. That's fine. I'm happy with that. There we go. Now I'm just going to click off and it runs through the steps to undo the, uh, the top and bottom. And you'll see now I'm going to have a perfectly nice clean HDRI without the uh, tripod or the the area of where the tripod was. Now it's going to look like a perfectly clean seamless 360 dome. So let's take a look. There it is. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then if I wanted to, I could go in and remove my van. I'm going to just leave it. I don't care. It's, it is what it is. It's just in the background far away from the HDRI. So, but that's another thing that could be done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spit out an 8K because typically that's what I work with. The, uh, the high res is a bit overkill, but I like having them just in case. And then the last but not least is this JPEG compression output. So as you can see, it's just doing a nice 8-bit. That way I could update the cover JPEG so that way I could see what the HDRIs look like. So there we go. And that, in a nutshell, is my process for processing the backplates and HDRIs. Not much to it, very straightforward, and now it's ready for rendering.